Hello, be not afraid. It's me, Jess, doing my uncanny TikTok TTS impression in a brief pre-roll advertisement for our new Skulltenders merchandise. That's right, we now have a Tapatico store featuring a very cool Heavy is the Head t-shirt as well as a physical Skulltender badge available for purchase. And I should mention, both products glow in the dark. Wow! And also, remember that Sensatium Cleanup Crew t-shirt that Felicity was wearing last episode? Well, that too exists on our Topatico store. Go to topa.to slash Skulltenders and check it out. More merch to come in the future. That's T-O-P-A dot T-O slash Skulltenders. Or check the show notes for a link. Now, on with the show. Ah, hello, my friend. It is I, the beloved explorer of Inshura de Velgard, your storyteller and captain of the Necrona, as we, um, as we, um, what was it? Ah, yes, a thank you. Now I remember the skull tenders are sailing across the Wonder Sea in search of the Nevermind, the final resting place of a forbidden knowledge. And, uh, hmm, I, hmm. Uh, oh, oh yes, uh, thank you. They almost sailed right into the rocky embrace of the silence. And then I guess they met the big treasure chest guy who gave it him presents in exchange for, uh, well, it is not entirely yet clear. But more importantly, just a pleasure. He tell them that the Nevermind is in the middle of the black waters in the center of the Wonder Sea. But what's this? A big spookier pirate ship on the horizon, the SS Coffin. Mamma mia. But we will hear more about that in a moment, I'm sure. But for him now, my friend, I, I just want to say thank you for taking these watches with me. You have helped me uh, hold on, I think, a little longer. And for that, I say thank you. And for your friendship, I say thank you again, with a feeling. I will be waking the skull tender soon, but for now, let us take a moment, you and I, to just enjoy the ride. After learning from Chester Pleasure that the Nevermind is located in the dark waters at the center of the Wonder Sea, you set a course for the only landmark in that direction, the SS Coffin, the enormous half-sunken ship that Felicity spied through her new silver spyglass. She also spied the grim skeletal form of Captain Bonebeard, the legendary pirate who terrorized the seas at some point in the past. Uh, he spied you right back, so, you know, that's coming. Uh, let's see. The plan had been for you all to rest, and you did for a while, a little bit. Uh, Ventura insisted on taking the watch again, and for a while as you were drifting off, you could hear him puttering around on the deck. Uh, real quick, everybody, uh, tell me, we're not gonna spend a lot of time on it, but just, like, something you're dreaming about before you wake up. This is not, this is not, this isn't gonna be that important. Just whatever you want. Just, like, a quick image that you're gonna get woken up from. A uh, vague pile of bones. Okay. Love it. A bag of chips. Ooh. Felicity looks around in her dream, and with a sense of dread, she realizes she's in the regular doo-doo, the owl dream, where they're all making out with each other. <laughs> she's like gingerly steps over a pile of doo-doo, the owls, and exits the room. <laughs> the one he's told you about countless yes, times the, before. Yes, the standard one that you hear about all the time from doo-doo, the owl. You almost step on a bag of chips, and right before you do, uh, you are all uh, woken up by the sound of a bell ringing up on the deck. Uh huh? Huh? My friends, come take a look at this. You hear uh, echoing down into the hold. The dinner bell. Oh, gosh. If this follows Ventura's voice. Felicity continues upstairs as well, uh, this time actually getting dressed first. I pat my tummy and go upstairs and think about dinner. Oh, hell yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm Pavlov effect by that bell. Oh, yeah, it works. It works. So as you all make your way onto the deck of the Necrona, uh, the first thing you notice is that it has gotten even darker. Uh, the moon overhead is a thinning crescent, lonely in a sky without stars. Without the 
brightness that the illumination that the moon was providing, you can see high, high above you and far off in the distance, the bright waters of Lunatic Lagoon pouring down endlessly into the Wonder Sea. That's where you came from, and it's the only way out. It's far away and up in the sky. Uh Uh-oh. I didn't think about an exit plan. (sighs) Hmm. We'll figure it out when we come to it. Cross that bridge later. That's not how I live my life either. We'll cross a bridge most likely when we get there. Well, I could probably make it if I swam. Straight up in the air? I go pretty fast. In the river. Fair enough. You like a salmon? Yeah. <laughs> what? Can you go against the stream? You ever seen salmon go I think against I the could. stream? You ever see salmon when they don't come? I've gone upstream before. Wait, what? <laughs> <laughs> you think you could beat a salmon in a, in a race? Depends what we're running from or going towards. Could you beat the salmon in a race? <laughs> yes or no? Yeah, answer the question. Venture with his hideous huge eye is now staring uh, directly at you. Sure, maybe. Yes. I respect you. Why am I getting grilled on this? Uh, Dudu's making a note for later. Ooh, grilled salmon. Says Dudu out loud. Oh, yes. Uh, come up come up and make a breakfast, my friends. Though it is actually still the night, I'm not sure. It's so dark around here, and you see that, uh... Making breakfast anyway. Oh, hell yeah. Midnight breakfast. Well, you can break your fast at any point of the day. Stoner style. Mm. Let's see. Uh, let's see. The legendary fourth meal. <laughs> yeah, yes, yes. I, oh, oh in, my, in my culinary explorations, I wish to learn of this. The meal that happened on the other side of noon. A midnight snack. And yet, I never tried it before. Me either. You can, even though it is... Uh, either. Either, either, I'm not sure. Even though it is, is darker, it is darker, it's actually uh, not so not so dark on the ship because uh, the Necrona has sprouted little lanterns all around the edge of the ship. And because of the lanterns, you can see if you look down into the water that it's not just the fact that it's dark, the water looks black. Like, just like jet black. You are fully in Ew. that dark water at the center. Gross. Is this normal? Yes. Also, check this out. And uh, he he pulls out a... Uh, what does he have in his pocket? Um, an egg. Just like just like a raw egg. And he throws it down into the water. No! Uh, and it breaks. No! <laughs> it breaks? What? And, like, the yolk, like, kind of spills over the surface of the water. And then just, like, it gets absorbed down into it. Aww. Huh. Yo me an egg, Ventura. Oh, sure. And he uh, pulls out a basket of more eggs. I, s- I only need one, you fool. <laughs> okay, he puts away the basket of eggs, except for one, and he holds it out to you. Thank you. A deal is a deal. <laughs> Dude who grabs it. <laughs> All right. And then he throws it out into the water. <laughs> okay, make an attack roll. <laughs> Twelve. Ah, it hits the other one. <laughs> There's no... <laughs> It, it 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 is like it is like you're playing like a uh, like a uh, bocce, <laughs> an adventure like an adventure game from the '90s, and like the same background animation plays when you interact with it exactly the same. The egg goes, lands, flats. <laughs> Good shot. Got it in the exact same spot, Ventura. Fuck you. <laughs> Fair enough. I, uh, apparently, I've offended you somehow. I'm sorry, my friend. He just gets ornery sometimes. Someone stepped on my bag of chips in my dream. Oh. I'm pissed oh, off. I'm terrible. That's all for myself. I've never, I've never dreamed in sleeping. My sister was a dreamer. My sister Vesper. I've ever told you of her. Yes. A little. I have. The one you see is the future. A small amount. Yes, yes. When we met, but they have ever told you of when our village yes. was attacked? Like, like, like a day or two ago. Yeah. Huh. Oh. you wait? Sorry. You say I tell you this already. You at the restaurant? No, yesterday, on the boat. Are you? He's like, looks a little bit confused. He's like, huh, that's a... Oh. Strange. Okay. Well, I suppose I... Oh, no. Really? Okay. Well, okay. He looks a little unsettled. Uh, uh, goes back to steer. Oh, that reminds me. I wanted to show you uh, this, this weird shit. And he points in a direction that he is not looking directly at. Like, he's looking straight ahead, and he points off to the right and does not look at his own finger. And if you follow where he's looking at... Will do. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Actually, everybody make a perception check to see if you do see this. Eleven. Four. Nine. 
Okay, uh, nobody <laughs> nobody gets a great look. <laughs> Dudu, you get the best look at it, and this is makes sense because you actually saw this before. It's like that translucent, shimmery X you saw in the air that was not, it wasn't Chester Pleasure's House of Treasures. It wasn't the pyramid. It was just like, like a shimmery kind of thing. And it's like every time you try to look directly at it, it darts away. You other two, you can barely see it at all. It's just like, it's like getting ahead of you. But it's like every time you almost see it, it moves like that much out of sight. Uh, it's just almost, but not, it's like, yeah, what the, what the, the, do you know what that is? No. I thought you would know what that is. Some kind of shimmering splendor. Yeah, it's weird. It, it seems to know what I'm trying to look at it. Yeah, I can't get a good idea on it. Is there some sort of like arcana I can roll to understand this or not even? Not really? yeah, yeah, you can try to like understand to see if something magical is going on for sure. Why not? Yeah. I mean, probably. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> my Archon is plus three, but I rolled a two, so five is not ah, so great. Ah, <laughs> yes. I don't know what the hell that thing is. Okay, absolutely. This is definitely uh, a curse of some sort of dark wizard, you think. And then you think, that's not really that's not really how the world works, <laughs> I don't think. Can I roll Arcana for this? Yeah, yeah, you could. Uh, everybody wants to try to see if this is magic, for sure. You have a negative one to Arcana. Let's try. Uh, 17. Ah, and do do? Oh. I woke up in the wrong sleep cycle, I think. Five. Okay. Uh, Dudu, you have the exact same thought as Visk, but do not have the follow-up thought where you think that you're wrong. Mm. So this looks like the work <laughs> of a dark wizard. Jerk. Uh, Felicity, you... Uh, sometimes magic is, like, bullshit. Mm -hmm. Like, you're not sure if this is magic, but it does seem like the kind of thing, like... Like you, like you just know that you've been, you've like gotten a sense of magic before, and that this is, this is doesn't seem to be. It's like a, it's more like a percept. It's, it's like a mirage. It doesn't seem to bear immediate risk. Like the fact that you can look at it, almost. The fact that it's just there, and all it seems to be doing is keeping you from looking directly at it. For some reason, this just doesn't activate. Like whatever hairs would normally be sticking up on the back of your neck, your danger sense is just like not going off. It's just, this is something, but there's a lot of something out here. It, Strange, but yeah, I don't think it's worth worrying about right now. I guess we'll deal with that when it matters. Yeah. Oh, oh okay. That's the bridge we have to cross later. <laughs> oh, yes. I'm not so good with bridges. They don't build bridges to new adventure on the horizon. Well, maybe they do. I don't know. <laughs> That's exactly where they would put a bridge. <laughs> oh, that's a really good point. You're drunk. I don't know where <gasps> Are you okay, Ventura? Ah, uh, I'm not drunk yet. I mean, <laughs> we just, I, I have, I don't know. I haven't slept in a while. I know. I know I was unconscious. Yeah. Yeah. Do you need? But I'm just not tired. You keep taking our watches, and I think it's a little detrimental to your mental health. No, I. Just, it's important. Mental health, sleeping. I suppose. I just, you know, I just uh, the idea of it, the idea of like going to sleep is, a, <laughs> frankly, it's a little frightening. I, 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 I feel like I've got the good momentum going. I'm just gonna ride this out. Well, nothing has gone wrong so far, so I trust in you, Ventura. I don't have the authority to order you to go to sleep, so whatever. Yeah, I can't tell you to do it, but I I gotta agree with this. I think it might be a good idea, but just don't push yourself too hard, okay? Yeah. Uh, Dudu, make a, make a medicine check. Medicine. That's a nat 20. Oh fuck, Doctor Doo <laughs> There you fucking go. So uh, it's a, it's really appropriate that you're the one who uh, knows what's going on because uh, you have seen this before many times. The last time you saw it was with Johnny Bravo. Ventura is fading. He is fading. He's starting to. You can. He's like he he's been moving into and out of like opacity, but in this moment when he looks a little bit like unsettled between not realizing he had already told you that story and whatever these things are that are floating around, uh, you can see the lantern light shining through him and it's like scattered like dawn and fog. Just like, hey, 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 wait a minute, Vinci, you're fading. Ventura. Oh. Oh, shit. Now? <laughs> I try to, can I grab him? Yeah. Yeah, like you, you put, as your hand like makes contact, he's there. I try to wake him up. As if that's the problem. Oh, shit. Oh, okay, okay. Okay, okay. No, no. You've, 
I was drifting a bit. No, no, he, he does seem to like, like you can't see the light through him anymore. You like pull him back. Like, With that 20, do I know um, if sleeping is good for him at this moment or not? He's sort of past sleep. Okay. You remember like how ha- like how Johnny Bravo looked at the end and there is there is a kind of like lucidity that comes back at the very end and he's sort of in that zone where it's like these like he's past where sleep could help. It's not his his body is not tired. Oh. It's all right, my friends. I, I I think you know what? I think I think just working is going to keep things going. Just clarity of purpose, yes? Right. Alright, but I'm making some coffee also. Oh, wonderful. Uh, it's in the cooler. It's in the igloo cooler, <laughs> along with my clothes, eggs, uh, margarita mix. <laughs> and my jar. That's where that is. Oh, yes. This jar. Uh, Thank that you. What kind of coffee? Yes, the co- what kind of coffee we got in here? Open the cooler. It's in the jar. The jar has like a vacuum sealed. Oh, button. that's where I, that's what we did with it. Yeah, it does look like a cold press. Like, uh, <laughs> jar. A yeah, press. It's, it's like a carafe. Ah, carafe. Perfect. I can make a great cup of joe. Hold on a second. Ugh. All right. Uh, there's a little uh, there is a plate with a uh, a bunch of salamander eggs inside that just get hot as you like as, as they just like heat up. Naturally, yeah, they're in, they, they look like they're in some kind of solution that keeps them from hatching. They just heat up. Biomancy, baby. What am I doing with those? Am I gonna You're use those? Hot, it's a hot pot to make coffee. Oh, okay, if you want. I mean, you can use it if you want. Yeah, that's just what it's doing right now. I'm a, I'm doing all the little things you got to do to make like a, a a French press, just like a shot of espresso for everybody. Hell yeah! Give me give me a give me a scrounge roll, uh, but it's super easy because all the stuff was shown. This is just what you do to cook. 16. Excellent. No grounds in it. You don't, it's not bitter. This is, you make fucking great coffee for everybody. Uh, How does everybody take their coffee, actually? Black, I don't know what coffee is. Like, I know what it is, but we don't drink it. Black? Uh, Cream and sugar if we have it. Cream, sugar, got it. Vinci, what you thinking? Um, like, wait a second, like, pour a can of Coca-Cola in it. And he like, there's a like can of. That's what I'm talking about. Yes, delicious. <laughs> oh, that the black and mild. Hell yeah. Or coke in there. Dude, do you recommend I take this a certain way? You had a great insight with that cinnamon roll the other day. Try that it. That was amazing. Try it black. Try it normal. See what you feel. Okay. I'm gonna roll to see if I like it. <laughs> okay. Yeah. No, this like, is I... totally up to you. This is a character decision. Like I can taste, but do I like this? It's like an it's like an espresso, so you're arguing a blank. It's an eight. <laughs> oh, what does that mean? <laughs> <laughs> it's, you get the bitterness. You probably just wow. you probably don't like the bitterness. Well, that's okay. That's a new flavor. Have not had that yet. Mm-hmm. Yes, there are five. I'm sharing a black and mild <laughs> with Vinci. Oh, delicious! He takes a he takes a <laughs> huge gulp. Yeah. Uh, We're all healed. Yay. Ah, <laughs> uh, yes. I, Ventura, mm-hmm. uh, may I ask, how long have you been down here in existence in the underworld? He like looks at, ah, yes, ah, hmm, since I died. Well, yes, but. He's like thinking, he's like, so, ah, let's see. Hundreds of hundreds of years. I don't know. A couple of, a few decades, maybe? Maybe a lot, maybe a lot, lot no. Less than a hundred years. I know this. So the hundred years? It's hard to keep track of such things in the afterlife. There are a few markers. All I really had was my own death in the past. Right. And the day I would meet you all at Carpe Seum in the future. And then after that, I knew I would meet you once more again. These were the things that my sister had, somewhat against my will, prophesized to me. She said it was important, and so I forgave her, and she, you know, she knows. She sees a future, whatever, she must be right. But I didn't, I never liked this. I never liked to be chained to a destiny, you know? That makes sense. Yeah. Mm. Certainly. Yes. Bullshit, I think. So, <laughs> at a young age, you know, we, we all, we all, we all served the Veilgard name in our own ways. I explored the distant horizon, finding necromancers in the dark corners of the world, and obliterating them with my powerful eye beam. <laughs> Ouch. <laughs> Yes, that's what I got. That's what they said. Felicity nods like, ah, yes, but of course. Mm -hmm. Uh, Are you saying you had that 
when you were alive? Oh, yes. It was quite cool. I would just blast Whoa. the shit out of zombies and necromancers. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I don't know everything about topside creatures. Is there an animal that does that? Oh, no, my friend. This was, this was a necromancy. I didn't do it on purpose, but the three of us each had... Now, I, now, even though I do not remember things, I feel like I remember saying this, but I will say it again. Each of us had a different, could see something because we had been touched by necromancy. Oh, oh, I thought this was a post-death soul stain situation. I didn't know that was gifted to you by the necromancer. A gift, of course. No, no, no. It was more like we had encountered necromancy and its dark mark was left upon us. Mm, okay. Never mind. Proximity to such hideous power. Dumb question rescinded. Totally reasonable question. Hey, what's that? He points off towards, uh, you see, uh, I, I don't know if I mentioned it. Uh, oh, no, wait, I remember what that is. It's that boat. And you see, uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's the... The scoffin. Do you hear that? And you do. Drifting across the black water between you and the SS coffin, you hear... A song. A haunting pirate dirge. Just one voice at first, but then others take it up. And, well, you know what? Let's let it speak for itself. Take my flesh, but leave my bones. Be a long, long while till I sail back home. Meant to show. So yeah, you hear, it's like chanting, it's carrying across the water from the direction of the SS Coffin, which, as I say, it looks to be about the same size as on the horizon, although it is hard to tell in the dark. How close are we to that thing? I don't know, it's hard to tell in the dark. Hmm. It's, it's definitely on this side of the horizon. Is my spyglass eye still shut? Uh, check it out. Uh, or I guess that's that's you are describing you. That's what you meant by asking that. Yeah, it's uh, it's looking all around. It's looking up at you, friendly. Okay. Uh, Felicity uncollapses the silver spyglass and looks towards the SS coffin. Uh, so first, the bad news. Uh, the SS coffin is close, much much closer than than it appeared in the dark distance at the edge of the horizon. Uh, which brings me to the good news, which is the ship is no longer half sunk. Uh, it now appears to be about 90% underwater. The last bit of it is just sticking up out at a 45 degree angle. Uh, you may have, you may recall that it was like carnival cruise size. Now you're just seeing a little tip, but ooh, here's what, so as, because it has been slowly sinking as it has been moving directly towards you, it has maintained the same relative size on the horizon, allowing it to keep, you know, to sneak up on you in the dark. Uh, last bit of it is sticking up out of the water at about a 45 degree angle. You see three pirate skeleton crewmen uh, walking around on the deck, henchman style, trying to keep their balance, uh, which is not easy because their spines are threaded through chains that lead 
below deck, down through like a dark uh, grate. The chains disappear into the darkness, yes. Uh, there's only one mass that is still sticking up out of the water at an angle, and standing on top of it, you again see Captain Bonebeard. <gasps> Seven feet tall, a skeleton pirate with two eye patches, a beard made of bones, and yes, bones sticking out of the sides of his head, cruciform position from which a black flag hangs, making his head into a Jolly Roger. He's wearing a knee-length black coat that is buttoned up to the neck with shiny brass buttons. Uh, as you are watching, uh, he does not make eye contact with you this time. Uh, he instead reaches down and grabs an enormous spike on a chain and drives it into the mast at his feet. He then grabs the side of the mast with both hands uh, and, and he's grabbing, you can see him kind of straining and then you see, as you're looking with the spyglass, knuckle bones flowing out of his sleeves of the coat like water, swirling around his hands, which are growing bigger and bigger, made up of all these knuckle bones to just finally wrap around the mast and just wrench it, snapping it with this huge creaking crack that you can hear all the way from here. And he lifts up the mast and... Ooh, hold on. Can me or Dudu see this or are we just hearing these totally divorced sounds? So Felicity is getting a close look, but you can see like something is happening in the distance. You'll pretty quickly get to see something else. <laughs> there we go. So he lifts the mast up and hurls it up into the air in a high arc, the iron chain trailing behind like the tail of a comet uh, reaches the height of its arc and it begins to, everybody can see this now, it is falling uh, directly your way. I want everybody to make a dexterity saving throw. What's that coming right for us? What is that? Um, uh. Look. Hit the deck. Okay. Hit the decks. Saving throw. I punched the deck. Uh, 14. I'm rolling bad. I got an eight. I got an eight as well. Ooh. Okay. Total party kill. <laughs> no, um, Ventura got a nine. Okay, uh, Dudu, -Doo, <laughs> you're gonna hop back out of the way and take no damage. Uh, Felicity and Visk and also Ventura will take five damage. As splinters erupt, the mast comes crashing through the deck. It doesn't seem like it fell with enough force to breach the hole below, so the ship is not sinking, but splinters and nails explode everywhere doing that damage that I talked about. I think I said five to both of y'all. And the skeleton crewmen of the SS Coffin all grab the chain and suddenly you hear that chanting song again as they begin to pull, pull, pull. The chain is taut between the two ships and they are dragging the Necrona directly towards the SS Coffin. And everybody's gonna roll for initiative. Oh no. Fuck yeah, that, that went crazy. Ow, shit. And you, why didn't you guys move out of the way? I didn't know that was a thing that could happen. Jesus, I need to stop saying Jesus. <laughs> I have to edit it out every time I say it. <laughs> it's fucking, I put like little, like I tag it every time. Like, God damn it, I said it again. <laughs> nat 20. 19. Ooh. Now I'm rolling nat 20s? Yeah. Okay. Dudu also rolled a 20. What? Okay. No. What are those? No, that's good to be faster than the bad guy. Where were those a second ago? A literal second ago. That was fine. Did you, did you add your modifiers? No. That was with my modifier. Okay, well, oh, 22. Okay. What is my modifier for an initiative? Your dexterity bonus. Oh, that's a 21. Okay. See, that's why you, that's why I have to know because even though you both rolled a twenty, there you go. Uh, okay, so Dudu is going to be extremely first. <laughs> oh wait, that, that, no wait, that was a thirteen. That was a nineteen. Oh. Uh, I got a twenty-five. Damn. Shit. Yeah. yeah. Okay. I have extremely Never mind. Okay. high initiative modifier because of my <laughs> subclass. It's like what I got from yes. that. <laughs> right. It like doubles your it like doubles your initiative bonus, right? Yeah, I have a plus six initiative. Speedy. Oh no, that's good. That's good because now we need to leave it to Vis to roll a twenty and go last somehow. Try to somehow go last. <laughs> somehow go last. That's fine. We all act before them. That's good. Yeah. Oh, fucking. Okay, this is just that twenty. Just barely. Come on. Come this on. guy this guy rolled a 16 and his modifier is a plus two. So it's like everybody's moving fast. 
Everyone looks cool as shit right now. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, really. Here's what's happening. Just to set the scene, the the SS coffin has latched onto the Necrona via this mast, which has pierced the top deck and is attached to a chain that is being pulled taut by three skeleton crewmen over there on the SS coffin. And the dread pirate Captain Bonebeard hurled that mast, and that was his move. So it is now Felicity, your turn. All right. Uh, so how heavy is this chain? What am I, what am I seeing? Uh, thick as your arm. <laughs> Not good. Uh, no. And they are to the side of the ship or in front of us? They are directly in your path. You are still moving towards them at speed. <laughs> okay. Uh, Felicity takes off uh, downstairs towards where the cannons are. I'm going to get the cannon ready. Try to get them on our starboard side. You still have it loaded, right? Mm-hmm. From last, yeah. you loaded it before you went to sleep. Okay. Sure did. Well, then you can probably do something with it if you want. Although, I see what you're saying. They are facing the wrong way. Yeah. Yes. I, what I'm, I'm asking if I can do is, is, can I, like, be ready at it for when it, we turn? Okay. Yes. What is your plan for the ship turning? Well, I'm leaving that to my, my crew that I trust. Okay. Excellent. So they're in All right. front of us? We're, yeah. we're facing we're facing head on. They're directly in your path, and they are there's like a chain that is pulling you that way. Okay. It, but it is like yeah, it has pulled you. It is pulling you straight forward. Let's drift it. Cannons never failed us yet, folks. All right. Uh, is it my turn? Yes, it is. That, sorry, I should have made that clear. Do do. It is your turn. With calm uh, is the I, I've someone should furl the sails. I furl the sails. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I, I bring those bad boys up. Yes, you... This is your third... This is like your third or fourth day on this ship. And uh, between Felicity's training and just like the doing it, you are able to quickly pull the sails up. Uh, speed cuts dramatically, but you are still being... Now you are just being pulled in that direction on by the chain. But you are not, you are not like moving towards it quickly mm-hmm. with, on the winds of intention. Um, and with Conk, I'd like to, since he can extend, I'd like to try to use him to hit whatever bottom, if there is one, <laughs> okay. of the ocean and kind of use it, use that momentum to anchor it so we can turn a little bit. Drift, a little drift. Okay, fuck yes. Ah. So because Conk is like that, you can definitely extend Conk as a bonus action. That's been, it's like summoning Ricochet. Mm-hmm. So sen- I would say that like since since the ship is no longer sailing technically because it doesn't have the sail, I'm going to let you make a, add your vehicle proficiency to make an acrobatics check. This is good. This is dr- drifting. This is now you're going to be able to use your land vehicle proficiency. So roll acrobatics and add your, All right. add your proficiency. I'm going to go up to like the, what's the pointy part of the ship? The front of the ship. God, I wish I knew. I the fucking bow? Yeah, the bow. It's the, yeah, the bow, bow or the prow. That was the front. Stern is the back. I'm going to the bow, and I'm going on the left side, so we kind of turn a little bit that way. Yeah, Julio is right there and gives you like a little approving nod from his little cage because he's like, "This is the part we're hanging from." So make a uh, make that acrobatics and add your proficiency to it. Wish me luck. Good luck. Thank you. That was an 18 overall. Hey, it worked. That really helped. Uh, <laughs> sick. I fucking love that. So here's what's going to happen. Uh, as you are holding on to it and you have a firm grip on Conk, because you have, like, rolled this really well and, based, like, you did the thing with the ship before where it, like, grew into it, Conk actually, like, grows, like, some vines and bark around your hands to help you take a grip Ooh. Uh, and sticks down into... It's not water. You're able to feel it. It feels like sticking a finger into jello. And as soon as it makes contact, the ship pivots hard to the direction that you wanted. Facing the side you heard Felicity on. Yeah. So you're now giving you're giving your broadside to this. They're, the chain is still quickly pulled taut, but you're giving your broadside. However, as the stick makes this contact, you see the entire horizon in every direction quiver upwards. The hell does that mean? Quiver upwards? It's like if you were looking at this, if you were looking at the horizon, mm-hmm. right? And it just like shivered and is higher up now. Mm. And water is kind of like 
now there is like a slight incline to the water in every direction around you. It is now kind of like pouring in down towards you. I'll deal with that later. Yikes. Yeah. Clear shot, Lissy. Yeah. Are you, what do you do? Are you holding? I'm holding. The... Yeah. Okay. Okay. You were holding. Uh, as long as nothing fucks with you, you should, you will be able to hold your position here until your next turn. Yeah. Now it's Visk's turn. You are about, the ships are about a hundred feet apart from each other. And if the physics of that don't make sense, why find another podcast to listen to? You fucking nerd. Let's go. <laughs> um, let me get a visual here. The skeleton crew are coming down the chain toward us. No, they're pulling it. They're pulling they're it. Pulling it. Yes, it's pulled. Uh, chain. What's the chain made of? Iron. Heavy iron. How lovely. Visk is going to use shock grip on the chain to electrocute all of the crewmen pulling them in. Yeah. Ooh. Ooh. Fuck. That's so good. Oh, that's cool. Okay. <laughs> Let's hear it. The fuck is up? <laughs> we have established, we have established in universe, like, when you use this attack on something, uh, it travels along the metal. It happened on the, tra- it happened on the midnight special. Uh, it was what, it was actually the reason that you didn't have to fight the liparish when you went in the tube because you had electric, just a little fun background information. Anyway, just a little, just a little thumbs up from God. Ooh. I'm God. Nice. Thank you, God. I love thumbs ups from God. Hmm. Stay tuned. Okay, so... Th- yeah. <laughs> Visk takes uh, both gooey hands, wraps it around this iron chain, and sends a huge surge of electricity down the chain. Yeah, these skeleton crewmen are holding on so, so tight. When the electricity hits them, uh, they, you know, they do the vibrating that they do. Uh, it is a little disappointing. Uh, you do it's briefly like a... see, you actually briefly see them completely covered in flesh, like they're still alive. <laughs> it is the reverse <laughs> version. And you can I'm see that say. one was a barracuda. Uh, one was a, hold on. <laughs> Did, I thought I was going to have to do this joke later with the bones. But uh, you see, yeah, you see that one was a barracuda. Uh, one was a sea urchin. He's got spines. Suddenly, it looks like it's and and one has eyes on both sides, like a flounder. Uh, but they but like they are uh, they stop pulling. They are they keep, they don't let go, but they are no longer pulling. And the ship is now uh, the the chain goes a little bit looser. They're not pulling it taut anymore because the the ship is still moving towards you, but the on its own power but they're not pulling the chain tot anymore, which is going to be helpful for what happens next. Uh, do I have movement? You sure do. This is also gonna slink up the chain in order to uh, board the ship. Okay. Be careful. I'm gonna shoot a cannon at it. Eh, doesn't mean it'll work. That's fair. Yeah, it's about 100 feet away. You can move about 30 feet along the chain. Okay. Just figure if the cannon doesn't work, Maybe there's some some stuff I can get up to to sabotage the boat otherwise. So even though the chain is now kind of like slinking, like swinging back and forth, you adhere to surfaces if you aren't actively being pushed off of them by the wind or something. So you just move along this. If it were vertical, it'd be one thing, but it's horizontal. It's not that different than forming feet for you. Nice. <laughs> I just want to clarify that you do not have a climb speed, but you are able to move across this as normal terrain. I have a slime speed. Or fuck up your edit. That's why I did a clap. <laughs> 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 this is my punishment. <laughs> it's fucking stupid. I'm sorry. Childish. <laughs> There's only one person here that's allowed to make puns, and I know uh, exactly who it it's is. It's me. It's me. No, it's good. That's a good. That was more wordplay than a pun. I have another really good pun later if I actually manage to talk to this guy. <laughs> we'll see. Uh, well, he's about to make it easier. Uh, so, Bonebeard, who I have thus far not had to completely decide on a voice for, because I hoped I would something else would occur to me, but it didn't. So here we go. Uh, he points a skeletal finger at you that shifts as you're looking at it as new knuckle bones grow out of the end and then fall off and then it kind of like stabilizes. He says, How dare you electrocute the crew God damn it! of the dread Captain Bone Beard. <sighs> and he leaps up onto the chain, uh, but it like, it has a little bit too much slack because they're not pulling the chain anymore and he is going to have to, he's going to try to like run across it, but because the chain is slack, because you electrocuted the guys, he it is going to be difficult for him. He is going to have to make a uh, acrobatics. Oh shit. Yeah, he is only able to move about 10 feet 
and is like losing his footing. He almost falls off. He has to move very slowly across this. And he turns around and kicks the head off of one of the skeleton crew. And he says, do a better job. Or I'll feed you to the sea. Uh, it's Ventura's turn. Uh, he says, uh, Miss Fairweather, what the hell could I help? What, what, are you positioned to cannon? What do you need? Drop the anchor. Okay. He leaps down from the deck and hits the big button with both feet, causing the anchor to drop. Uh, it is, it, it does not fall for as long as it normally does, uh, before you, and again, the, the horizon, like, quivers, like, the whole thing, like, uh, I don't know, like, like, you're, like, you're in a big bowl and somebody's shaking the edges. It's getting, it's, it is, the, the incline of the water gets a little bit higher. Real bowl vibes right now, guys. Mm-hmm. Oh, we're bowling. So the skeleton pirates, the one whose head was kicked off, uh, lets go and walks over, picks his head back up, puts it back on, and then gets comes back to the chain. He is not able to resume pulling yet. That took his entire action. But the other two take their entire action to keep pulling the chain, and they get it. Ooh, unfortunately, let's see. Yeah, they do. They get that. Uh, they get that chain taut again. So is he, he is going to be able to move again quickly and. And this is what really sucks. Uh, it is his turn again. Bone beards? I know he just. Yeah, that's, that's see, that's what? the thing. Yeah, see, Whoa. the thing about the thing about bosses is sometimes they attack twice in a round. I see. Damn. Okay. Yeah. Damn. They get to do two things. It is it is what distinguishes them. So, Bone Beard is going to. Ah, he did better this time. He is going to use his entire movement. All 60, he is going to move twice, 60 feet, and this, you, he is now standing, he moves across it, he's like seven feet tall, and seems to be largely comprised of a shifting mass of bones, and he has a big, stupid, non-aerodynamic flag hanging out of the back of his head. He should not move as quickly as he does, but it's like he he, move, he look, like move, fucking moves like Felicity. He just like skips across the chain. He's just like, like Naruto running. Like somebody is just dry, like they didn't draw. Like they're like, how do we, how do we get a, how do we not have to figure out what the posture of someone is running in various scenes is? I know we'll do it the same every time. Uh, and then he just dra- his his cell is dragged across the background of the chain to be standing directly above you. Uh, Can I uh, talk before he does anything wild? Uh, yeah, he's not, that he used his entire act, he used his action to move twice. So yeah, he, he's done. Oh. But he is now like, okay. you move what, like how far, like 30 feet? 30. Okay, so we're 30 feet off from the Necrona. He is he is right there, this, <laughs> standing in front of you. Holy hell, it's Bonebeard. There's a mess on the chain. Oh, what a thrill to meet you. He slimes up to shake his hand vigorously. What the, ah, a reaper. I'm this big fan of your work. I never thought I'd meet such a rare statistical outlier such as yourself. It's, it's a celebrity death dealer. And like this turns to Felicity and Doodoo back on this ship and it's just like, guys, it's bone bed. Oh my God. Are you, or sorry, you stay, but you're staying right next to him, Yeah, right? I'm like on the chain, but I'm just like formed up and like shaking his hand and fanboying out. So he can't get an attack of opportunity. Okay. The, you can hear when, when this turns around to call back, you can hear the sizzling of the fuse of the cannon. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, fuck. All right, uh... You, sir, have got to be in the top 1,000 ways to die. That's legendary. You know, there's a whole gooey decimal system subheader dedicated to you in the town hall archives. That's insane! Your flattery won't work, demon. I'm not coming with you. This turns back to the ship. Guys, I'm talking to the Bonebeard. Wow! Uh, Felicity, we cut to you below decks as you are as you are adjusting the aim on a cannon. <laughs> Yeah, Felicity is going to try to put that cannon directly into their ship and try to, you know, scatter these guys like bowling pins. Dudu is, is, is just kind of shaking his head at everything Fisk is doing and just like, you gotta get a different taste in skeletons, Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, Johnny. Ah, Johnny, you gotta get a different taste in skeletons. Fist doesn't hear it. <laughs> Johnny Christ? Yeah. <laughs> That's the one we got? That's Johnny the Christ. That's the Christ that gave the Yeah. Uh, Jonathan uh-huh. Christ. Jeepers Creepers. We gotta get you... We gotta get you laid. <laughs> uh, all right. Felicity, you are aiming... Uh, I fucking love that. But Felicity, you are aiming. You're, you're doing what you're doing. It's your turn. You're down on the deck. Yeah. You're aiming that cannon. Let's rip that cannon, baby. Where are you aiming it again? I'm aiming it at the deck of their ship. Okay, at the three... 
Yeah, I'm, well, specifically, I'm aiming it at the ground beneath their feet. Okay, that's good. That's good. That's good to know. Uh, make an attack roll with the cannon, and you add your proficiency because you are proficient in cannons. Uh, dirty 20. Okay. Um... <laughs> Quit giving us an easy button. <laughs> Don't have no fear. Um, I'm sure there's a plan for it, but we had to try. Don't jinx okay. it. Don't jinx it, Casey. Uh, oh, I forgot there's a cannon. Uh, I keep forgetting. Uh, so those three, the way we're going to do it is that because you were, we're going to do it like Final Fantasy tactics, where because you were aiming at the ground, in fr- like at the deck in front of them, uh, all three are going to take half damage from this. Okay. So roll your amount of damage that you roll for a cannonball. I certainly... Is it like 8d10s or something? It's, it's high, so roll it and then we'll half it. Okay. It's like, yeah, it's 8d6s or d10s. Or... Yeah, what is it? Cannonball, 5e... Oh, no, cannon, 5e ranged weapon. Is, if you hit it, it's 8d10. Yeah, it's 8d10. 8d10, I was right. oh, nice. Shit. Where is that? Good for me. I'm curious. For remembering numbers. 32. Okay. That is... So is that 32 divided by 3 divided by 2? I think two? just divided by 2. Or is that just all? 32 and they all get Wait, that? so like how much damage did you do? Like before you split it? I rolled 32. I haven't split anything. Okay. Yeah. So each of them takes 16, uh, which is enough. So the cannonball arcs through the air. This is not your first cannon. Uh, it hits the deck in front of those three skeletons, uh, shattering them like, well, it's like a bowling ball hitting bowling pins to go everywhere, you know, xylophone, blah, blah, blah. Uh, Bonebeard turns and snaps his fingers, and three more skeletons with chains around their spines hop out of, from below decks where the other chains were leading. Uh, one of them with a remora skeleton face, the other with a goldfish skeleton face, the third one is an empty suit of clothes because it was an octopus. <laughs> it flutters away and a third one jumps out. This one looks like an anglerfish. <laughs> Damn. That's a good joke. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> they don't have a skin. A uh, bone beard like dips down and looks at the cannon. He like rolls his head down to the end of his hand and look and is gripping the flag and looks directly at you, Felicity. It's like 30 feet away, but he does look. He says, nice try. But I got lots of guys on my crew. Don't you know that, Felicity? Well, I do now. Hey, don't suck up to me. I'm not sucking up. Pirates don't (laughs) respect that. I'm being sincere. (laughs) I admire your dedication to the craft. Hmm. So the, 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 the door to the downstairs opens up again, and a little bit of smoke is billowing out of it, and you hear... Ricochet! And Felicity steps out the door with a sword in her hand back onto the deck. Yes, a jagged black blade appears in your hand. Ricochet says... Oh, fuck. I thought the cannon was going to do it. I've been enjoying my vacation. <laughs> yeah, it was, it, you know, it was nice while it lasted. Yeah, well, you know, get, you know, enjoy things where they, where they, it's all, oh, shit, it's Dudu's turn. Uh, Dudu, it's your turn. <laughs> <laughs> she doesn't have a quip. If I feel like it doesn't really matter if the ship gets hit too much because it's already sinking. It's already ghostly. Oh, shit, you're right. That's my guessing. That's my guessing. I'm just thinking it out. I'm thinking it through. I'm doodooing out. Dude is doing the Omni Man pose, going, think, think, doo doo, think. <laughs> you need to think, doo doo. That's all I know about that show. Um, it's be quiet. Good it's, moment. It's, very, it's a good, it's um, very good show. <laughs> Earned. <laughs> Don't care. Um, Too bad, Mark. <laughs> uh, we already got the arm, uh, the anchor down. So as a first action, I suppose I just un- I bring back conk up. I don't do that anymore. Yeah. It doesn't even take a full action to retract okay. it's, or a bonus. You're just good. You're just, you just you got conk. I think we just we just need to focus on the guy. Hell yeah. Um, this is right in front of them. Yeah, yeah. Sheesh. I don't know what to do. You can. How do I put this? Uh, so there's you can share space with an ally. Oh, okay. You can like see like like because like a we work situation. <laughs> it is like a work share. It's like a space sharing situation. So because an ally takes up five feet mm-hmm. and your range is five feet, like each square, you can reach to the other side. Sure. In in this homebrew, that's how that works. So I'm not wrong. Uh, so <laughs> you can like I'm just letting you know that the path is not completely blocked mm-hmm. currently. Um, I'll just take a big swing at Bone Beard, I guess. All right. With Conk. Uh, you know, uh, let it, letting him. I, I don't want to get on the chain. I'm gonna stay on the boat, but with Conk as an as a as a magically 
growing weapon. Oh, you want to, sorry, you want to swing Conk 30 feet? Yes, please. <laughs> Fuck, I didn't ever think that that might happen. It literally did not occur to me as something that might happen. Oh, I thought of it immediately as soon as he got a retracting the blow. <laughs> hey, Vesk. What? Huh? Duck. Uh, all right. Um, so because you've never done this before, I like it. But because you've never done this before, you're going to have to make the attack with disadvantage. Everything else is the same. All right. Do you have to roll to, like, have a reaction to duck this? Probably. Um, I'm, I'm going to go for, like, the middle ground, so yeah. <laughs> yeah, you're just you're just doing the big... You're doing a horizontal attack so that if he dodges to the left, you're going to still hit him. Yep. You're, you're using your L1. I got gotcha. you. Yeah. All right. Okay. With disadvantage. Seven. Is not going to hit. <laughs> okay. Uh, so, God, you hit the mass. Oh! Like, like you, you for, like you start way too far back and it's still extending, uh, but you get like you get a sense of the heft of it. And if you want to try to do that again, you won't have to do it with disadvantage. Oops. But it's like it's like that kind of thing where you're just like you're, you're so, you visualize it and it's right in your blind spot. Just clang. Yeah. And uh, you can still move, but it's uh, that's what that's your action. Dudu moves to hide his hands, his face, his hands. Go, oopsie, sorry. <laughs> Yeah, uh, Conk grows, like, a couple of little, like, angry eyebrow leafs and, like, looks up at you. <laughs> Sorry. I twied. <laughs> he turns them back into, uh, sideways parentheses, uh, up. Happy eyes. You're good. Wow. Uh, this gets your turn. <laughs> good luck. Don't suppose I can talk you down from being aggro. Well, what do you got to offer? Friendship. Hmm. You want to join my crew? Well, you want to work for me? Well, no, well... Mm, I'm not sure I could get a chain through you. No, you wouldn't, so never mind that. Uh, you got any bones? Mm, unfortunately, no. Are you a pirate? Also, no. I think I might know one, however. I'm afraid those are, like, the two things I'm looking for <laughs> in a crew member. All right. I didn't want to be one, just wanted to be nice. We'll keep your resume on file, but uh, the direction we're heading right now, in these turbulent times, we can only bring on so much. <laughs> no, I understand. Budgets and... This is no reflection on your, on your character or on your qualifications, but there's a certain... Oh. There's a crew culture we want to preserve here, and I'm just worried that somebody who doesn't have bones and isn't a pirate wouldn't quite... Gel, if you'll forgive the turn. Oh, uh, perhaps? No, I'm afraid not. This is gonna cast grease on the chain and back away. Fuck, I wish you wouldn't. <laughs> okay. <do that>. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you struck out with me. Well, that'll show me. All right, you, uh, you, you fucking grease the chain. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> me and this chain are besties. <laughs> how, how big is the area of effect? It's like five feet. What's the, what is the range on this? Uh, Greece, uh, 60 feet. Ow! 60, that's the range, but the area of effect. Oh, okay. yeah. The area of effect is a 10 foot square. Okay, there is a- On a point within range, so I'm going to slink back up the chain towards the Necrona and cast Greece behind me as I go. As you move out of, as you move out of his range, he is going to take an attack of opportunity. Because you were right up in his face. There. That's just how it works. Dudu watches this and goes, damn, you squirt for anybody these days. <laughs> This doesn't hear that. They're 30 feet away. Ventura's, Ventura's yeah, like... Yeah, Ventura and Felicity exchange a look. The back of Ventura's neck <laughs> opens. The back of Ventura's neck <laughs> looks like somebody pulling down their turtleneck as his eye that is on the top of his head opens even <laughs> wider. And we're going to do a set. Glad I'm not looking at that. <laughs> Too bad. Oh, sorry. Who am I being? <laughs> I get so confused. All right. He, uh, as you move out of his rage... Okay, so do, 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 so we'll, uh, a ten won't hit. Will it? Um, my is that my spell save DC? No, just your Armor AC. Class. You're just your AC. Armor class. Oh yeah, eleven. <laughs> oh, you're yeah. Just uh, misses. He rolled a. He, yeah, he rolled a. He rolled a. Oh, he actually rolled a six, so it would have been eleven. But I'm I'm I saw a five first, so that's what it's going to be because that's what I said. Oh, thank you. Uh, I'm even more important than dice. Uh, so he's he swings. Um, a spine erupts out of his hand like a sword, and he swings it directly down at you, but uh, because of the grease, he, he just does not have his footing anymore. Uh, like, 
fingers are growing out of the bottom of his boots. They're like splitting and he's trying to get like purchase in the spaces between, in the links between the chains. But it is, <laughs> it's hard because of this goddamn grease. You shouldn't have underestimated me. You should have been nicer. It's look, it's not, it's not, it doesn't have to do with quality. It's just, it's just a matter of, of culture. What can I do? I approached with friendship, but instead I'll have to fuck you up. Well, approaching with friendship is sort of exactly what we're not looking for here as pirates. What can I say? Things could be different. We could be living in a better world. I'm dead. <laughs> and he's, he misses. And now it's, it's this. You move away to back to the ship, you say? Yeah, yeah. Okay. You are back on the ship. He's 30 feet away. There are 10 feet of... There's 10 feet of grease that you just uh, extrude behind you as you move, like unto a slug or perhaps even a snail. Take your pick. Oh, actually, he should have, yeah, as I thought was so windy, grease appears, uh, he has to make a dexterity saving throw or fall prone. Uh, so... Good luck falling prone on a chain. That's only the size of your arm. Let's see. He's got decent dexterity throw. What's your AC? What's your spell save DC? No, I'm going to need that number. Spell save? Uh, 15. Okay. He's got, like, even chance here. Wow, he fucking did badly. Yes. Uh, he falls prone on a greasy chain, and I am going to set him to a difficult... I gotta say, I gotta do this legit. Like, I, I wanted this gotta be more of a problem, but I gotta, I'm gonna set him to a pretty hard... Uh, <laughs> Difficulty level. <laughs> I'm gonna call this acrobatics. Pretty hard acrobatics throw, which is not proficient, and to try to stand... Try to not fall into the water. Okay, he did get a 15. Ah. So he is, he is... He falls prone, and he is going... He, it's like he's going to fall off, but his arms, like... Wrap like the bones wrap around like a fruit by the foot rolling back up, and like it's just like the it's, it's just like the coat sleeves are wrapped around. It's just like nothing. He's like hanging from the chain by his wrapped around coat sleeves, like below it. He says, "I gotta say, not my proudest moment." You hate to see this happen to a celebrity. It is now his turn. So don't worry, word's not gonna get out. And he uses his entire movement to pull himself back onto the chain. However, because the chain is still greased, and because he did start his turn there, he is going to have to make a dexterity saving throw to see if he <laughs> falls down again. This was well done, I must say. Okay, uh, 15? Will 15 beat it? Uh, spell save is 15. Okay, meets or exceeds. He yep. stands, however... He used his entire movement. So he's going to start his next turn in the grease again. <laughs> yes. However, he says, all right, I've had about enough of this. And he opens his jacket to reveal a twisting, horrible mass of bones, like bubbling, like boiling water. Just so many bones and skulls. As you watch, a skull wearing a black bandana rises up, and you see knuckle bones try to form pitiful hands as this skull is trying to pull itself out, and he says, none of that, and swings his head down and headbutts the skull that's trying to get out, shattering it to powder that just disappears. And three cannons made of bones grow out of his chest, aiming at the side of the necrona. Calcium cannonade! And he is gonna make three cannon attacks at your ship. Oh my god. Hell of a guy. Wow. Cool. It's a 21, a 24, and a 10. Oh boy. Uh, so, <laughs> because apparently one of those skulls was supposed to be one of the cannonballs, so that one just like. That one in his tummy just kind of goes away, but sticking directly out of his pecs are these two long cannons that fire cannonballs directly into the side of the Necrona. Uh, I am not going to roll uh, 16d10. Oh, wait, yeah, I am. Hold on. <laughs> Let's see what we got. See, this is why I wanted to befriend him. I had a feeling he might do something like this. I'd rather be friends with someone that has biological cannons than enemies with them. Gross. What's gross about it? <laughs> okay. Uh, the first cannonball blows a hole in the sail, and the second one just completely cuts the mast off. Just like at, like at the base, and it tips and falls into the water behind you. Uh... Who is on deck right now? Me. Me. I think all of us are now. I came up from below. Yeah. yeah. I'm trying to think if anybody would 
rationally be on the opposite side of the deck, and I can't really come up with anything. No. Nope. Um, not trying to fuck you guys over, just trying to be legit. So nobody, nobody is going to get hit by this. Uh, but the uh, that that yeah, your your mast is now has fallen into the water. The replacement mast uh, is still stuck through the deck. So it's all fucked up. Uh, he, but like, so he he does his big special attack, and then he closes up his coat. And because he is ending his turn on the fucking grease chain, he's gonna have to make a dexterity saving throw <laughs> to avoid that. He gets another fucking five. So this time he just falls into the fucking water. I was going to ask if like the burst would like fling him off the chain or something. <laughs> anyway, but yeah, cool. It apparently yeah. affected him uh, pretty significantly. So it, he is like blown. He is actually like slides backwards on the grease and then falls like he is like he is doing a cool jump at the end of Vanilla Sky. I that's a I think that's a suicide. Let's do something else. He is doing like, <laughs> a cool jump like a guy who is not at the end of Vanilla Sky. And he uh, falls back, but he just kind of like hits the water. And like there's like you now see there's like the water is like an inch deep here. Huh. If you like the ship is being dragged through some kind of dark, wet meat. <laughs> yeah, what's gross about that? <laughs> That's not that well, it's shallow. Huh? What the hell? Yeah. That's what Dudu says. What the hell? Uh, it's Ventura's turn. Um, he is going to... Shit, I guess he's going to do it. Uh, he is going to uh, start charging his laser. And you see his, you see him like, you see him, I don't worry, friends, I have something up on my sleeve. And you see him like extend his hands to either side to like start charging his laser up. Does, does anybody want to do a dramatic like, no, Ventura? Because I don't think Visk would do that. <laughs> Fair enough. Oh, yeah, that hurts him. Yeah, Ventura, please don't. Oh, wait, hold on a second. No, we. What? Wait, this, wait, this is necessary. Yeah, we got. Are you sure? Yeah. Okay. You also unnecessarily used it on a guy with like seven HP last time. You don't know. We gotta talk about priorities. Fist, fist, shut up, shut up. We're trying to save our friend here. Yeah. Well, I'm helping. Resource management is in everyone's best interest. Oh, my ship. Julio, no. I'm just sorry. I'm in such a rage. I'm in such a rage. You guys, you guys both make a persuasion roll. Okay. Okay. Not this, though. Not me. <laughs> because you don't, you said you don't care. <laughs> I did. It's not that I don't care. It's just that I'd be like, why is he doing this? What is he dumb? <laughs> 19. All right. Critical fail. <laughs> okay, Dudu, you like kind of seem to make him want to do it more. No, that would be too cool. That would rock so hard. Don't do that. That'd be such an amazing ending for your character. Don't. You can see like his 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 eyes that aren't glowing, like like get stars in them. Like it's it's just like <sighs> oh, I'm somehow making it worse. Sorry, Felicity. <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> Felicity, do you have a better thing to say? <laughs> and rolled pretty well. Yeah. You have so much to after live for. Ventura, don't. How are we gonna get out of here without you? Oh, you're right. My duty does come first to my friends. I did say I would escort you here. All right. Well, okay. And he just goes up and like pours a cup of coffee for himself. Ooh, that would have been too cool. Thank goodness. I feel like there's because an intermediate point between that. Ah, never mind. It's fine. The pirate skeletons. What are what? Uh, the remora, goldfish, and anglerfish on the other end uh, pull about thirty feet. So the chain is now about oh, it's about thirty feet across. Uh, the grease, however, because they are pulling it, uh, there is still the ten feet of grease. On the other side, uh, Bonebeard stands up, and he is now. What did we? How, how about how far away? He was. How far away was it? This? Uh, I was thirty feet away. Okay, he stands up, which takes half his movement. Uh, and then he takes another. He takes the rest. To he is now within about fifteen feet, and he is just walking across the surface. He says, "I didn't, I don't know what this is about. I've gotta be honest. Do you know what's up? No." Why are you fighting us? I was going to ask you where the Nevermind is, but you went and got all aggro on us. Oh, the Nevermind's over there. And he points uh, like 20, like just like right behind his ship where there's just like a little, there is just a gentle, like the water kind of slopes up like a little, like a soft hill. It's right over there. Oh. I'm trying to get away from it. I'm trying to get a new ship. My ship's been sinking the whole time I've been here. 
So I gotta get a new ship, your ship. Well, our ship's fucked up. It doesn't have a mast anymore. It'll not conducive to getting a new ship. I'm just gonna put my mast. That's why. That's why I sent the mast for my ship over. Oh. <laughs> You thought of everything. Yeah. That's why you're the best. This guy's He's good. He's a legend for a reason. This guy's good. Right, isn't he good? Wow. Incredible. Yeah. Wait a second, why are you sucking up? It's not my first stealing a ship. I'm, a, I'm the dread pirate Bonebeard. I'm a bunch of pirates. He opens up his jacket again, uh, and he goes, Cal! Oh, shit. Oh, hold on. Oh, boy, you see, like, he's, like, got to do something. He, like, he, like, puts his hands on his knees. It's not my, this has not been my best day. Oh well, uh, he is going to. Uh, what is he going to do? Uh, he's just going to. He's just. How many turns does this motherfucker have? <laughs> he gets two per round. This guy's turns are crazy. He's getting all. He's just. Talking. Seems like a. All he's done so far is stand up and walk fifteen feet and talk a lot in this turn. Uh, right, we haven't done any damage to him yet. He's also given me, given us some lip. <laughs> oh yeah, well, you don't have a monopoly on that, old man. Mm. You're hooting that round. Do something. All right, fair enough. He's gonna, you know what? He's gonna pull a skull out of his stomach and just throw it at you. He can't get the calcium cannonade going again, but he's gonna make an attack roll. Happens to a lot of guys. Oh, well, not me, because I'm always absorbing new guys. <laughs> Believe me, I am a lot of guys. There it is. Uh, got there. Uh, he throws a skull at, uh, he throws it at Doo Doo. He's gonna throw a skull at you. Uh, it is going to... It's coming straight at you, Dudu. Uh-oh. A missile, you might say. Mm-hmm. Heading straight towards you. Throws a skull. He is going to try to hit you for eight damage. I'm going to deflect that missile. Oh, hell yeah. So you're going to you're gonna, you're gonna use the reaction. So roll a d10. Mm-hmm. And what's your dexterity modifier? Two. Okay, roll a d10 and add five. Thirteen. Oh, okay. Yeah, so you completely neutralize the damage, and since this is the first time this has happened, uh, I will explain how it works. When you deflect a missile and you reduce the damage to zero, you can use a key point to then throw the thing back as, a, as, as an attack. I use a key point to throw it back in his ass. All right, make, his a, head. make an attack roll. It is a, okay, oof. Yeah, that's the spot. He deflects two and becomes like the Ganon and Link fight. <laughs> 17. I just grab it and throw it as it back at him. All right, make it roll a d6 and add three. Same thing he did. Yeah. Five. Okay. Bonebeard takes the first damage of the fight as you pitch the head directly back. And it, uh, it, go, it hits his body, uh, sinks in, but bones shoot out of the back like an exit wound. There's like a confetti of bones. Uh, the coat, the coat like float, like flips up in the back as like bones spray out of the back of him. Ah, fuck, I need those bones. Uh, he, he, he looks at you, Dudu, with no respect. He says, you look like you know your way around a boat. Would you like to be bones inside me? No. Fair enough. <laughs> no. All right, I'm not gonna give you the hard sell. I'm just gonna take your bones. I don't like any cell from this guy. Felicity, it's your turn. I'm, I'm fully against the cell. I am in cell. <laughs> Jesus Christ. All right, so how, how far is this guy from us exactly? I think I said like he's like 15 feet from the ship at this point, uh, just standing on like a, like a wet, meaty surface. Yeah, he's also below us. Yeah. Huh. You know, I always heard of this guy being more impressive. I know, I'm disappointed. Guys, what can you do? Uh, Felicity is going to uh, put her other hand onto Ricochet, give a quick spin, and then try to let go of her and launch the sword, throwing it at him. Shit, okay, uh, that's a... Oh, wait, you're, you have, you use your dexterity to attack, right? Yes. So ranged attacks are made with dexterity, so I just wanted to make sure. Sure. Make an attack roll. Yep. And it's an attack roll with range as you're hurling Ricochet. It's an 18. Okay, uh, what part of him are you aiming at? Uh, it's gotta be the bones. Okay. Uh, right in the center. <laughs> <laughs> it's gotta be. Oh. Right in the center of that Jolly Roger. Oh, this head. Okay, make roll damage. All right. Gotta be the bones. That's 10 damage. Okay, you can, and you can't, you can't do sneak attack at a distance, right? No, I can't. That's not, okay. Okay, yeah, you... It pierces one of his two eye patches. It just splits like it splits the skull like he now has a he now has a cool vertical 
Like, well, you know, not now. Right now, what he has is a sword through his face. He says, oh! Oh, I hate it! I hate a sword in my face! I'm gonna need a new skull. Maybe I'm gonna take yours. Maybe I got a Catalian skeleton now. We'll see about that. That would be cool. Representation for the Catalian people. If you were absorbed by me to be my new face. All right, enough of this. Ricochet. Oh, fuck. And uh, he takes another three damage as, <laughs> the, as like his skull, like that side of his skull, like collapses and part of like that bone, like is flapping. So the, the, the Jolly Roger effect is a little bit ruined now. Uh, but he also now looks more like crazy and cool, if that's what you're into. So yeah, you, he takes another three damage from it being pulled out, essentially. Well, he has a diversity initiative as well at this job. Yes, but it feels forced. It doesn't feel like, I don't, I just don't want to, just don't put it in my face. No, I'm not going to, sorry, I don't want Ricochet to be saying that. Sorry. <laughs> I don't like this bit. Uh, ow, my face. Right through it. Right through the, right through my look and eye. Now you only have one eye patch. That's all I have. I was grossed out by being in his skull. I don't have a better quip. Yeah, and I'm, I'm passing the rest of my turn to recover my feline agility. Excellent. Doo-doo, it's your turn. I want to wedge Conk into where the black mast has pierced our thing to try and pry it up, out, and over onto his dumb ass. <laughs> oh, you want to just like... Are you like making a lever to... Yeah, a lever to... To pry the mast out, their mast out, and then hopefully in the same movement, if I can get enough, you know, leverage with Conk. I see what you're saying. Drop yeah. the mast on him, like dropping a piano. Like dropping it. a you're piano. To, you're, oh yeah. You're trying to flip the mast. Of, so, your mast or their mast? Just so I understand. Their mast that has pierced our ship. Yeah. It won't okay. Change. You want to tip it over onto him? Yes. I want to pry it out and then tip it over onto him. Excellent. That is. What could that be but an athletics roll? Performance, a little. Here I go. It is going to be much easier because you are using leverage. Mm -hmm. Leverage. Leverage. Oh, God. Leverage. 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 <laughs> 22. <gasps> Oh, wow. Now I gotta think about it. Leverage! Shit, how much damage? Leverage. 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 How much damage did this do to y'all before when it hit you guys? Six. Uh, six or five. five. I think it hit everyone for five oh, yeah, except five. me. Yeah. yeah. Five. Oh, yeah. So the thing was, I, th I rolled a d12 for that. So that seems reasonable. But this is also like... I got a d12. Okay, yeah. Uh, roll a d12. No. Roll a d12... Twice. Eleven. Pretty good. I'm gonna put a piano crashing noise. <laughs> put a tree falling. I'm gonna a tree, tree cracking. A tree cracking, but then when it lands, piano land noise. Oh, I was gonna say a bunch of bowling pin sounds. That's for the skeletons earlier. I already. Oh, you're I already, right. You're I right. mental <laughs> noted that. Yeah. And six. Okay. Seventeen. <laughs> okay. So you stick conk in there. <laughs> You do a big push flip, and it's like, there's no fucking way it's gonna... And then, baby, it's the power of simple machines. For the past 5,000 years, they've been doing this shit. It flips, it, it topples, and it slams directly onto the top of his head and sticks him down into... In addition to taking a shitload of damage, uh, he is, he is <laughs> swooshed down into the meat, and... Oh my god, uh, about half of the sky goes away. <laughs> In every direction, as the horizon is now oh. like, because you have now jammed another thing down. He says, no, what are you doing? You're gonna get us blinked. Blinked? Yeah. Expound? What do you mean? We can't really- Expound? <laughs> I, don't think, I don't think he can. He's underneath a giant oh, sorry, mask. he doesn't say that. <laughs> Everybody forget I said that. He should have. Uh, actually, he should no. say it right as he gets fucking smashed. <laughs> no, he's, he's, so the he takes that damage. Uh, the skull that he had out that was all cool uh, does the piano keys de de like tinkling as like there is teeth and they fall. That one shatters, and a less cool one uh, like slides up to the top where that one was. He says, "What are you doing? You're gonna get us blinked." Blinked. What does that mean? Yeah. 
Uh, I think he's talking about the Horizon stuff, guys. Oh, As God. I notice that we're in a bowl. We're bowling. Oh fuck this! And he uh, he is going to he is going to try to turn and uh, head back towards his own ship, which is. Uh, as you might as you might have picked up on is like fairly uh fairly sunk. So he like turns and goes, No, oh, I didn't think this through. I don't have another plan. I got hit by a mast. <laughs> is there another guy on the show already who sounds like this? I don't know. Uh, <laughs> a little bit last episode the coral brain guy. Oh, that's like just this. what pathetic guys sound like here. Jaleel Jaleel White. That's sort what of we sound thing. like. Oh man. That's fine. That's fine. Vi- oh, Visk, it's your turn. Okay, um, I want to posit that we all quit this shit and not get blinked. That seems like it affects all of us negatively. And what's he talking about, Ventura? You're pretty incapacitated. You're in no position to bargain here. Pointing down. And, and like, in pointing down, they're, like, doing that, like, Seymour Skinner, like, pathetic. <laughs> like, look. Pathetic. Down at him. All right, who are you talking? Who are you? But who are you talking? Did somebody ask Ventura? I think I, think I did. Him. Doo-doo. I don't know. Well, <laughs> if I ever did, I'm losing my mind. Okie dokie. <laughs> Sorry. Just wanted to cover that before we get to the next thing. Got it. Uh, yeah. This it is your turn. Are you, you? Yeah, I'm positing that we stop battling. Okay, uh, but who are you it saying? Seems like this the blink to? is bad. I'm saying this to the, the uh, to fucking Bonebeard. Okay. Can we de-escalate this situation? Because it seems bad what just got said. What are you gonna do if I don't? <laughs> well, we're all going to perish. Sounds like. That sounds bad. Right. But I'm not used to running away. It's not the pirate way. I'm going to ground pound the mass that your ass is under. <laughs> oh, man. I'm I st- don't think that's in our best interest, dude. <laughs> Shit, I just forgot. He's jammed up to his knees, so he did not. He turned, but he like he's still stuck there. Shit, I forgot that. You're stuck. You're stuck, dude. <laughs> what do you want me to do? Calm the fuck down. Let us into the nevermind. I'm not guarding it. I'm just, you know, in, <laughs> I, okay, fair enough. Call off your crew. Exactly. Oh yeah, he turns and uh, he turns and he says, "All right, boys, that's enough." And the uh, the three the uh, Remora goldfish and anglerfish skeleton pirates all stop and he all like one of them takes out a pack of cigarettes and offers it to the other two and they all just like <laughs> lean against the chain uh, enjoying a cigarette. One takes out takes out like a skeletal phone and checks it. <laughs> Bone phone. Yeah. Are we out of initiative? Uh, I, hmm. This make an intimidation roll. Gladly. Thank you. <laughs> Please don't crit fail me now. It's uh, 12 plus 3, 15. Okay, yeah, that's fairly intimidating. Captain, be honest here. You've been outwitted, outclassed, and generally outmaneuvered in every way. Do you really want to find out what else can be outdone to you and your seemingly unearned legacy? (laughs) Stand down and return to your vessel immediately, sir. And let the skull tenders do their damn jobs. So, like, he, this guy already recognized you as some sort of reaper or figure you're calling. This is somebody who has lived at the edge for a long time, and he, uh, he is, he is, he is cowed by you. He is cowed by the situation. He like turns back and he like realizes that he followed an order you gave him. He says, "What have I done? I used, I was, I was bone beard. I've, I've been in this cursed wander sea. I've been starving for pirate bones. I'm not, a, I'm not even a bony shadow of what I once was. Oh, I give up. And the bones that constitute." Bonebeard begin to just kind of like slough off him as the legend of Bonebeard begins to fall apart before your very eyes. The 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 the, the legend that kept him unliving, or, or undying legend, it begins to he's he's been he's been bested. He gave up. Just like that one time. Mm-hmm. It's just like that one time. And he leaves behind nothing but a damp coat. Do you like anime? How about manga? You know, not every manga can run for 300 chapters and get an anime. A lot of them get canceled after 20 and disappear. Here on the Shonen Flop Podcast, we read those forgotten stories to see if they were unappreciated gems. Or true failures that deserve to be thrown in the trash. It's usually the second thing. We even have guests like Shen from Shen Comics. 
Red from Overly Sarcastic Productions. And all of the skull tenders. You can find Shonen Flop at shonenflop.com or wherever else you get your podcast. Keep on flopping floppers. Well, that was disappointing. Uh, the three skeletons, uh, uh, look, the three who are enjoying cigarettes, give like a shrug and a nod and uh, just kind of crumble away. And the, the SS coffin stays where it is. Still got a chain in you, but like, huh. I'm going to have to update the archives to indicate that guy was a wimp. Oh, you know, they're never as impressive in real life as they are in the legends. Yeah. <sighs> Didn't you quit your job also, Visk? Oh, uh, right. No, wait. I don't know if I'm allowed back in the building. <laughs> you could probably write a letter. A lot of things have happened. Yeah, yeah. You're out of combat. You're out of initiative. Uh, the Dread Pirate Bonebeard is, has deconstituted. You have, you have, uh, you did, you did a skull tenders thing while you were here. You got rid of a ghost. Mm -hmm. You got rid of a, a, a an <sighs> un, undying legend. Good job. We tended to that skull pretty thoroughly. It's a shame. Didn't have to happen that way. It went, you know, pretty well, all things considered. Felicity is like wringing out and trying to clean off Bonebeard's coat that was left behind. She's got like a, like an old washboard. Yeah, nice, nice digs. Yeah, make a make take a look at that thing. Take a like a closer look if you feel like yeah. it. Yeah. Uh, what I got here is there just like a pile of so just a pile of bones here. Uh, the bones, the bones, like. They like disintegrated. They disintegrated into, yeah, into sort of like a... a right. Yeah, sand that becomes nothing. Uh, but the jacket, yeah, because... So, like, the only dampness is whatever was from that... Whatever that meat, is, that wet meat is that the ship is carving through as it as it travels. Uh, the... It is a nice coat. It is... Uh, you know what? Um, all I said was that it was uh, knee length and black i think so would you tell me what brass does this coat buttons. look yeah brass buttons it's got brass buttons what does it look like beyond that yeah it's you know it's your classic pirate coat it's uh the br brass buttons uh black with like you know little gold stitching in the doormat a little bit showy uh i think it's been pretty clear at this point bone beard was a real presentation guy more than a uh execution guy damn and the coat is reflective of that it's, it is a a nice functional uh if not particularly uh, magic coat. And Felicity flips it around and she's gonna see if it fits. How, how tall is Felicity? Uh, like five, seven. Okay, so he was seven feet tall. So like knee length on this guy should be like trailing along the ground for Felicity. But like, as you pull it on, it like shrinks to fit. It adjusts to fit. It's like the torso gets shorter, the whatever various things happen to make a coat fit somebody better. It's nice. It feels good. It actually, you said it wasn't magic. It feels like there might be something to it, but whatever it is, is not readily apparent to you at this moment. But there's, there is, there is something between you and the rest of the world that is more than fabric. Huh. Um, maybe you can examine it when you are somewhere a little safer and you have time at length okay. to examine it. Um, but unlike Chester, unlike when you got stuff from Chester, there's no one here to explain to you what the coat does. Seems a bit dangerous to wear the, the garments of a very cursed fellow. Uh, Spoils of the war, I say. It's what he would have wanted. Yeah. It's your risk, but whatever. Yeah, I mean, you know, am I going to die again? Kind of. Look and fly. Gotta admit. Thank you, Dudo. She yeah. like, like, uh, smiles and like adjusts the collar of the coat a little bit. Hmm. Clearly proud of herself for some reason. Don't suppose there's anything useful on his sinking ship. Um, it seems to have like locked into, it has stopped sinking actively, but it is like, it is now just sort of like tipped over, like, like just the very tip of the Titanic, just sticking out. Uh. Just like the very little end, just like pointing up. It's actually pointing up towards the, uh, towards the, uh, what you call it? Lunatic Lagoon. Isn't that wild? Uh, which is uh, closer and closer to the horizon as the horizon is moving up. My friends, I think uh, perhaps if the Nevermind is indeed just over there, just in, just, in, just in distance over there, perhaps we might want to make a haste. How? Our mast was ripped off, if you recall. Hmm. You make a fair point. Mm -hmm. But what about this? Julio, please, can you, uh, my, my friend, can you help me? He want, he's, he's going to try to lift the ma mass that crashed through your ship and try to, like, get... I, I want to see if we can kind of do a graft here. You know, I so said we got one mass missing, we got a new one. Let's, uh, 
get this out first. And he's, he's like trying to get the metal spike that went through the mast that was stuck through this other mast uh, off off of it. He's just trying to get that out. Hold on. The one we threw down on uh, Bonebeard? Are you trying to get our old mast out? That one fell all the way off the boat. So that might that one might not have... That one, I don't know if we have time. I don't know if we have time or the leverage, but this other one seems to still be, like, swinging. It is still, like, uh, attached. If we could just get it in the right position, Julio should be able to do the rest. All right. All right. Give it a shot. Whatever. I get it in the right position. Yeah, Felicity helps. Group efforts. Okay. Yay. Everybody make an athletics roll. We're going to add them all together to see how you did. Ten. Seventeen. One minus one. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, Felicity, you are pushing as hard as you can from the other direction. Uh, fortunately, you're not very strong at athletics. So uh, the combined forces of Ventura, Visk, and Dudu are enough to overpower you and push. Perhaps you got distracted by your cool new coat. Uh, you push this other uh, mast, which the wood is different. Necrona is carved out of a, a, a very, it is built out of a white wood, but this is a dark brown. So the it, it, it pushes up into place and he says, okay, now Julio, do it. And the deck of the ship kind of closes around it. And the sail like flaps and looks closer to the color than whatever it was before. It looks more like that. So your mast is now a different color. It is way bigger than your ship. It is a, an extremely big mast, an extremely big sail for your ship because it was one of many masts on a different uh, ship. Whoa. It says, all right. Powerful little guy. Oh, yes, he's so good. I love Julio. We have been friends for so long. He is a, he is like a, uh, like you. You have your, uh, your, uh, what is it, your sword and your, and your stick. Julio is my friend. He is my, he is my companion in this way. Oh, that's sweet. Yes. Yes. Dudu raises anchor. All right. Oh, wait a second. Uh, I forgot. Didn't he? Wait, wait. Isn't that it right over there? And he points out to that little mound that you guys saw, like, rising out of the water, only, like, a couple, a few dozen feet away. I think he said that was the Nevermind, like, right there behind you. He said that. Can't we just walk there? Yes. I suppose we can. All right. Oh, I thought it was, like, a style thing we were doing. Well, okay. Well, we need to, you know, we're going to need it. In, we're going to need a mast on the ship, unless we want to stay here forever. Personally, not a fan mm-hmm. of that conceptually. True. Well, let's get going. Yeah. Let's go then. Visk is going to, like, slink down. Slink down the side of the ship. Felicity climbs down with her claws after Visk. Yeah, as you guys, like, step as, as step down, uh, you set your foot. There's, like, maybe... It's like when the shower is draining and the, it's clogged, but not fully stopped up. And so there's like a little bit more water in the shower than you would want, like 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 maybe like a half inch at your feet. You know what I'm saying? I don't know if other people live better than me, so this might not be a good reference point. This but is relatable. It, don't worry. Okay, there's a it's like there's a little bit too much water, and it's like there's about that much. You're just walking, and it's just it's plush, plush, as you walk across. There's a little bit of give to this meat as you step on it, but uh, there is a landmass a few de- dozen feet away. You make your way towards it. It's just like a simple black curve, maybe four or five hundred feet across. Uh, it's the same color as the water around it, which is why it was easy to forget. It's like you really have to be like looking at it to see it. Uh, there are no other distinguishing features to this mass. No trees, no buildings, no temple with a guy standing under it, ready to give you a bunch of information under a big sign that says the Nevermind. Nothing like that. Just, <laughs> just this kind of like gentle hill that just kind of comes to a top that you can't quite see. I mean, you can see it, but you can't see what's up there. Kind of, full. it seems like it might flatten out. Something weird's going on. You make, you're, I'm assuming you're making your way that there. Yeah, well, approaching the mound. Yeah, as you step onto the gentle incline, uh, there's no water. This is just this. Gosh, if only there was a word for when, like, like the gel is kind of thick. However, <laughs> it does not exist. So we will move on. Uh, you get, you make your way up this little hill. Uh, as you reach the top of the hill, this little hill, uh, you notice two things. The first is those, uh, is, is the horizon is getting quite close, quite close. It's probably like, you know, like this. That's not helpful. Uh, let's see. <laughs> in it audio is, for it's, it's yep. an acute angle. It's at 10 and five. 
I mean, sorry, it's at 10 and 2. The horizon's at 10 and 2, so it's it's like a V. Yeah, that's the weird thing. There's a V in two directions, to east and west, but to the, to the north and south, the horizon is just higher. Uh, the other thing you notice is that here at the center of the Wonder Sea, here at the top of this hill, is that this hill is actually more like an like a, like an empty volcano. The top of the hill forms a wide, round rim that slopes gently down into darkness. Mm. And the opening, even as you're standing here at the lip of it, is slowly widening and widening. The darkness falls away and becomes absolute. You cannot see the bottom. Huh. Each direction seems concerning right now, but it seems like the horizon's on some sort of time limit. I think we should book it. That sounds like a good call. Yes. Uh, can I look down the hole with a spyglass real quick, see if I see anything different? Yes. Or is it still just black? You do see something different if you look down the hole with the spyglass. Uh, you see it's about as far down as you fell when you first got here. Uh, as you fell from, like, as, as up high. Mm -hmm. It's about that far down. Uh, just a gentle slope all the way down, and at the bottom of this blackness is a spot where all of the moonlight from above is gathering a thin silver circle beckoning you from the wide darkness. I mean, it's far, but it's not impossibly so. Dude, did you still have that rope? <gasps> oh, yeah. Oh, I love it. I pull out my infinite rope that I got from my small canvas bag of wonder seeds. Wonderful. I love it. Um, Make a lead line. Yeah, what do I what do I tie this to? Let's tie it to the, the let's tie it to the ship. Okay. Julio and a a, a like uh, four pegs pop out from the side with like a, like hooks on them. Oh, delightful. I whip it over there and it does it immediately perfectly, so I don't have to go all the way back over there. Yes, we skip over you going over there and, like, making a bunch of lead lines to tie around everybody's waists. You get them nice and secured. Everybody is safe. Everybody has their own little rope Copper life. knot work, nautical knots. Yeah. It's an infinite rope. What do you want from me? Yeah, it, it goes It goes as fast as it needs to. Uh, it, it happens fairly quickly. My God, it's amazing. Thrill as the D&D podcast does something <laughs> granular. <laughs> yeah. Oh, oh, it's for everybody. So you are... All right, my friend, do we... Into the abyss, then, I suppose. On we go. We have to. I guess. Felicity's going to lead the way. All right. Uh, so it's a smooth pit whose walls are slowly expanding. The ropes are tight around you, but despite the apparent sharp incline, you can just walk down it. Like, like the center of gravity is moving beneath your feet, wherever those are. You descend into deeper and deeper darkness. All the time, that thin sliver of moon overhead is growing narrower. That small circle at the bottom is growing smaller, but not not fast enough to be super worrying. And you are just moving down, walking almost vertically now. Uh, but then the incline of the wall, after a while, I don't know how long does it take about walk about a thousand feet? Uh, a few minutes. It takes longer than it took to fall it, but it doesn't take that long. The incline of the wall curves back and gravity has you standing at the angle you would expect. And you were uh, just outside that silver circle. Is this it? Uh, I don't know. I guess. Do we, like, enter this? Is it enterable? Yeah, it's just it's just the light from above hitting the ground in front of you. Oh. Uh, uh can I step into the light? Okay. Uh, you're obliterated. You step into the light, and <laughs> it's not a good joke, but it's funny to me every time. I'm sorry. Uh, so you step into the light. And nothing happens immediately. Huh. You hear a voice, though, call from the darkness that says, Wait for your entire party to be seated. <laughs> Do we hear that? Yes. Oh, jeez. Oh, oh, okay. Uh, okay. All right. Okay, okay, okay. This goes into the circle. Doodoo steps in. Okay. Uh, Ventura... It's right there with you. Uh, so you're standing in that silver circle, and as you're standing in there, the darkness at the edge of the circle shivers and writhes, and something that looks like a plate of squid ink pasta swarms itself up towards you, but stops just short. It doesn't come directly at you, and it tangles itself up. Like it, like the, like these strings are tangling themselves up into black, like a black living mass that is getting like twisted and tangled until it forms like 
a roughly bipedal shape with a couple of arms and like a rapidly tangling and untangling mass where the head should be. And at its feet, it trails away into the darkness and a bunch of different strings. Uh, I'm saying strings like it's it sounds like that, but it's not, you know, it's strings. It's a uh, it's like it's like little black worms mm-hmm. are like are, and like they're they're like flowing up into this thing and flowing back out. And it's like its extremities are flittering as you look at them because they were just like tangling and untangling over and over again. Can I help you with something? Is this the nevermind? Yes. That's your question. Oh. Gotcha. <laughs> just kidding. You'll know when the question's ready. Oh, you're, you're a good sport. That's right. <laughs> then we have... What did the man... I... To, to visk and velocity. <laughs> what, what did he want us to ask him? Sorry. So, uh, hi. Forget why we're location of the knives. Oh, no. I, I'm Visk. What's your name? Oh, I'm. You hear like it's like it. It's like if something had been describing everything that was happening from the beginning of existence up into this point in a like. With like, like energetically, but somebody condensed all of that down into one word, uh, and that like you hear it, and I need you to take a wisdom. I need everybody to make a wisdom saving throw. Sorry. No, it was a fair question. I just wanted to know who I'm talking to. Polite. Uh, Seventeen. Fourteen. Uh, also fourteen. Okay, and a and a and a, and a, a sixteen for sure. So uh, you are all knocked down. Oh. oh. Oh, I'm so sorry. That was on me. Sorry, sorry. I'm... And then the the black mass, twisting, tangling, writhing, whatever that is his head, stretches out and forms the letters, the word, <laughs> instead of his head for a moment. And then it condenses back down. Word. Your name, your name is the word. Ooh, you've almost got the accent right. But yeah, that's me. <laughs> it doesn't quite translate. It's pretty loud. <laughs> you should see what it sounds like when I'm not whispering. <laughs> Sorry, his voice is so funny. Uh, we, uh, I suppose you're the proprietor of the Nevermind, and uh, we seek a specific piece of information that the mayor has banished here to protect his claim to office. Yes, uh, yes, you gotta be careful. It might be like a monkey's paw. Like, I know. Uh, so, or twists, what do we say? Quit asking little questions. So I'd, I'd rather ask more broadly rather than the specific question, if allowed. Mm, don't ask yet, my friend. You're probably gonna want to hear the terms first. Yes, see? actually. See? Yes, see? I'm helpful. I do want to correct you on one thing, and this won't count as your question. I am not the proprietor. No, right. No, I am merely, and he forms that thing again. You're the word. I'm a helpful interface system. Oh. I have existed for... He looks looks down at his wrist. Oh, right. I don't have a watch. (laughs) I've existed for as long as you've been talking to me. As soon as you stop talking to me, I will die. Ah. Yes. Ah, Cool. Okay. Yes. Bad luck for me. I am the only thing that has ever existed that is both fully conscious of the certainty of its own death and has a really short lifespan. <laughs> you doing okay? Uh, hmm. I'm asking questions, Fisk. Sorry, sorry. <laughs> You're gonna... Just to clarify, I'm not going to fuck you over. You'll know when I'm answering a question. Okay, never mind. Ask all way. <gasps> yeah. Well, it's not like you're leaving anyway. Huh? Oh? Excuse me? I take in information. Uh-huh. Yes, go on. I don't do, I, you know, you can have some of it, but it's not like you can take it with you. Huh. The information goes in one way. You're not going to let us leave. Bingo! Oh! Mm. There we go. As soon as you all get your answers, you know, I'll just make sure. <laughs> but let's ask those questions. God damn it. What are the terms? You ask your question, you get the information you need, and then you stay. Oh, those are the terms. Hmm. It's forbidden information. You're the one pouring it down here. Ventura, what do you make of this? Do you have any insight? We were counting on you to get us out of here. Oh, that's a big... Okay. All right. Was that not the job? I said I would get you here. Personally, I never save anything back for the return journey. I 
guess I made a big assumption. <laughs> yeah, no shit, uh, but, you know, fair. Perhaps I should have been more clear. I'm sorry, I thought this was a... You know, we're trying, you know, it's an adventure. Don't worry about it. We'll figure it out. You know, it. the job implies returning with the information. Oh, you got to establish that in the contract. You can't, you can't be, you can't be established. This is the importance of contract. You should have got an operating agreement. I'm going to have a chat with Planchet when we get back about contracts and terms. Fair enough. I assume you made the deal with Planchet. I made, no, I just came to you, told you I would put you on my boat. Remember? We were all there at the restaurant. <sighs> with the mayor. Yeah. You probably don't remember Fisk, but the rest I, of us do. I remember some of that. Oh, yes. Oh, right. Now I remember. Yes. Sorry. Unfair. <laughs> or do I remember? Oh, no, I do. I do remember. Uh, it's, Ventura looks, like, pretty good. <laughs> like, this light is just kind of... Like, he's, like, glowing just a little bit. The light, the silver hitting his long beard and his enormous blue eye that is staring up at the moon is like, he looks good. He looks like more solid than he was before. I don't know, friends. I it's, I don't know. Question. I, well, let's just ask. No, I've got an idea. I'm gonna, gonna huddle with the crew. Just in the interest of fairness, I should let you know I can see everything happening in reality. Huh. So we're not talking to you. Gonna be hard to, okay, go ahead. He, like, sticks his, like, horrible twisting fingers into the side of his head as, it like, pantomiming that he is covering his ears. Thank you. Better. No face. I should just be clear. There's just, like... Just black leeches all yeah, over. Like, 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 a koosh, like a koosh ball and a paint mixer. <laughs> He's cool. I like this guy. This guy's fun. Thanks. So, huddle, huddling. Yeah. All right, what, what is it? What's up? Here's what I think is going on. Okay. So, he said, you ask a question... The question asker who gets the information cannot leave. But I'm wondering if the person that asked the question, if the other three get that information too just by overhearing it, and those three can leave despite not being the ones who asked the question. Hey, fuck you! What? Don't, that's cheating. You can't be doing that. What's cheating? That's not fair. It's not cheating. It's playing by the rules you made. Yeah. It's the rules. You didn't specify. Your rules, buddy. See, if I were setting the rules, I guarantee I wouldn't have set them such that I would die when you leave. I'm just saying that's the state of things. Unless. Sorry. Are you proposing that one of you will stay behind? With an unanswered question. This is glancing at Ventura. <laughs> Oh, well, shit. With the idea that Ventura will ask the question, have to stay here, and us protagonists leave, having heard the answer to Ventura's question, which we are going to tell Ventura what the question should be. Hmm, I'm sorry. Since you're not long for this world anyway, how about uh, doing us a solid? He's looking better than you've ever seen him. So solid, so strong. He says, I, I can't wait to get into golf. <laughs> I suppose you can play your dark little game, but I should clarify something. Right. <laughs> Here's the deal. I'll answer your questions, and as long as one of you stays here with an unanswered question, that's not what, what you can said. I do? That's not what you said. What did I say? Take the better deal if we can get the better deal. I guess. All I said was that I would stop you once I'd answered all your questions. Look, here's the deal. And he like joins the huddle. <laughs> he like pushes. <laughs> he pushes between like Felicity and Ventura. He says, "Here's the deal. I think you might be operating under the assumption that I'm in charge of the situation here." Yeah, kinda. I'm fully not. These were the rules I was born with, and I haven't really had time to think through the implications, but it seems to me you find a loophole where I don't have to die as soon as you leave. Yeah, maybe. Sounds good to me. So if you die, we can't leave? <laughs> I'm losing the thread. And if we all leave, you die. And if we all leave, you die? I'll just shoot you straight. Once you ask all your questions, I'm going to kill all of you. Yeah. Oh. So that you, the information stays here with me. Huh. Well, not with me specifically, with that. And he points directly down. Mm-hmm. He actually, like, points outside of the circle where the, like, things are leading. Oh. You were, we're already dead, you know that, right? Now, I know a lot of things here aren't. Oh, sure. Your physical mortal bodies died. I'm talking about the annihilation of your information. Oh, oh man. Be deleted. That's not great. Matter, energy, information, memory, it's all the same shit, and none of it gets out of here. You know, the thing that all of you undead deadbeats are supposed to be doing down here in the first place, going to the Eversoul, etc. I'm going to put a blanket over your jar that's so you think it's nighttime, and you just don't wake up in the morning. 
That's not how it works. Oh, well, well, we'll find that out later. Does that work with you? Sorry, does someone have a question? <sighs> Looks at each of you in turn. Dudu asks, how can all of us get out, you included? He's taken aback by that. <laughs> I, my friend. Uh, and he steps forward and you can see that the bottom of his feet just trail off into this. This thing you see is not me. This, and he like extends his arms and the walls all around you like quiver with these heart. And you see the same little things that are at the top ends of his fingers, like at the rim of the pit. It says, I'm the room, baby. I'm the whole thing. Yeah. There's no going anywhere for me. Huh. How strangely intimate. And the word pulls himself back into himself a little bit. I can't leave. I'm simply cursed to be here. Cursed is being cu- flavorful. It's what I was made to do a few minutes ago. I posit my original plan where we make Ventura ask the question we want, and then we all overhear the information, and we all leave because the question asker is the only person that needs to stay in. All right. Well, it sounds like if we don't all get our questions asked, what is we can you? still leave as long as Why? one person stays. That's right. So we could all get a question. What, what and that'll give me an excuse to not die. That's true. We're cheating. What is this whole getting your own questions thing? That's not the job. All right, Ventura, can you ask this? And then I no, whisper. we're asking Ventura to not <laughs> ask any things, and we're leaving Ventura. Felicity uh, quickly covers Ventura's <laughs> mouth so he can't ask the question. Oh, that's good, because I was totally going to ask. I was going to ask. Oh, the, 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 his mouth is covered. Well, I already asked my question, so you guys do it then. Did that count as duty's question? I guess there goes yours. No! Did you say how, can we? Yes. You didn't get a good answer. You'll know when you get an answer. So I can ask again? Ask a different question. I didn't have an answer for that one because an answer doesn't exist. Okay, then. So, I'm safe to ask a question, then. Okay? Yes. Uh, yes. So... We do have a specific question that we want to retrieve here, but I thought I'd go more broadly and ask, what is all the information the mayor has sent to the Nevermind? I should warn you. What? You know what? I'll demonstrate. I'm going to answer your question, the question you just asked, on an example. Okay. Uh, And he claps his hands and a, uh, the little like the little black tendrils like appear in the perfect shape of disc uh like just like right next to him it is, it is matching your posture exactly except it is gross little black tentacles here's how that's gonna go and he like leans over and exaggeratedly whispers in that thing's ear uh and it is like the thing you heard before but like muffled through a pillow uh and it's like a gun to the head like just like it's too much. It's too much. Oh. I'm just trying, you guys are trying to help me out. I don't want to kill you with an ironic monkey paw situation. Yeah, we're all struggling against that, I think. Thank you for the warning. Very nice of you. Yes. You're a good guy. Just ask. Just ask okay. the question. Uh, it's, the information we wish to receive is the locations of a number of silver knives, which seem to be keeping the Queen of Hell at bay. May we know where those are and how to get them? Ask questions so weird. Sorry. Un- not forgivable. It's one of the better questions I've ever been asked. Quiet, you. you. See? He gets it. <laughs> this guy can hang. The word can hang. Let me see. And he, like, leans back and, like, tilts, like, to the side, like, and uh, dangles his fingers like he's looking through, like he's, look- like he's, like, looking through a file folder system. Oh, oh, I've got this. In fact, I think I've got... Yes. And you, he, uh, you hear in the mayor's voice... Seven knives with each their chain. One was broken, six remain. Lost in the woods where nothing grows. Sunk in a swamp where no one drowned. Buried where the silver flows like rivers running underground. One locked inside a cage of dreams. One floats in space and yet is bound. The last one kills again, it seems. For heavy's the head that wears the crown. Seven knives with each their chain. One was broken, six remain. Wow. Does that help? 
I guess so. Eh. Better than nothing. I was hoping for, you know, coordinates or something, but that's fine. That's fine. So here's the thing. Do you remember what just happened when that thing exploded? Because it got too much information? <sighs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So whoever this guy is, I mean, I know who he is. You should. But he was pretty sharp. This information is layered deep. As you get close to the locations described in the little poem, you'll know more. Can you write that poem down for us? Sure. And he, uh, like, sticks out uh, his gross little fingers and they, uh, says, anything for me to write on? I should explain. You'll never be able to forget it for the rest of your life. Oh, okay. Never mind. It goes in deep. It's layered deep information. Convenient. Thanks for the info. Yeah. Okay. Who's next? Anyone else? Can't fathom what you Thames would even want to know from a place like this. How might a Cantalian dead return to life? What? Pfft, greedy. Was he? Hmm. That, that's my question. He sits back, bumps his mic. You're not supposed to! Viss just like gets in the way in between them. Like, don't you understand? It doesn't freaking. It's like she doesn't even see Visk. He, he forms a huge, huge pasta hen and pushes you aside, Visk. Doesn't work that way! You got your question. <laughs> I, have a, I have a clarifying question before I answer yours. Go ahead. What do you mean by return to life? I would like to be alive again. Permanently. Permanently! Like, Visk and, like, in the distance, just, like, pacing and throwing their hands up. Like, <laughs> how great you can't just ask things like this! Ridiculous! Dude who puts a big hand, just, just let it stop it. He looks directly at you, he says... Very carefully... But you can tell that just like the poem that you heard, there is a lot more information in that. It is like a quiet version of that cacophony of information that you heard before. And it's like you, you have some, you know, some shit now that you're going to need some time to process. But those it's like, it's like if you could zoom in on the words very carefully, each one of them is like written in encyclopedias. It's just like this, like dense, dense information that is flooding through your mind. Oh God! Oh my God! Says you right. You do not have it. Is it is almost too much? It's it's. This has not been prepackaged safely, like the like the cute little poem you heard. This is just like everything about Catalians coming back to life is worming its way deep into your soul. <sighs> All of that information is just filling in the cracks. You know this. You're going to need time to process it, but you definitely know some shit. Okay. God, that information doesn't come in smooth, huh? She's like shaking her head. Sorry, it's not easy. I am the... Oh, shit. And he forms the fingers to spell out the word. Okay. I'm okay. Thank you. Happy to help. Anyone else? I don't want to ask a question. Hmm. I just... I don't... I don't trust this process. Can I can I get Doodoo's question? No. No. Dibs. Oh, shit. Everybody gets one. This is bullshit. I didn't get to ask a personal question, and Felicity's head didn't explode, and this is bullshit. I thought it would be fun, but I don't, I don't, I don't trust whatever's happening here. I, and I don't feel good about having to leave Ventura behind. Don't worry, my friend. I do. I don't feel good about that either. But you're going to do it anyway, huh? Uh, as as you have been like talking to this guy, uh, Ventura has sort of just like walked uh, walked behind him and has like put his hands on the guy's shoulders, and you see uh, you see the like glowing eye uh, behind like behind, and it just like blast this thing apart and he says Julio get them out and you hear, you feel like a rope around your stomach yanking you up you couldn't see it but he could this thing was like twisting its way spiraling towards your feet you can see it from above now that this thing was the circle is getting tighter and tighter and you're getting yanked upward and all of this it is it's like it, it is now hissing and snarling and that kind voice is gone it is it is it is like working these things into the flesh of Ventura's fingers as he is like trying to it is trying to reform its head as Ventura is burning it away and he is like getting more translucent but you can still see him and he looks up and he says don't worry friends the last one kills and he like keeps blasting when you were yanked up the tunnel that you are in is rapidly contracting whatever is the opposite of dilating it is constricting there it is there you go. 
it is constricting around you as you are yanked upward out of this and uh, the thing is no longer uh, you hear like just like every voice that you've ever heard saying everything it ever said there is so much information slamming into you from all sides as you're pulled up and right before this thing can close like a pinhole you are pulled out and yanked upward onto the deck of the Necrono but the rope it cinches shut around the rope that was attached to Ventura Ventura and for a moment you don't hear anything but then you hear louder than you've ever heard it the sound of Ventura's eye laser charging and then a blinding beam of energy as thick as your new mass slices across the black island from below but just as fast the beam is gone Whoa! Oh god, crazy bastard just bought us some time! The Necrona has repositioned itself to face towards the uh, SS coffin. And the. Remember, I was saying, like, the size, like, that the, the, the horizon was, like, slowly contracting. It is now slamming shut. If it were any faster, if it were any smaller, it would be happening, you might say, in the blink of an eye. But instead, is happening slower. So you are you are that is what is on. You are on the deck of the you are on the deck of the Necrona. Ventura is gone, and the Wonder Sea is closing up around you. Let's get the lead out, people. Uh, how? Oh God, can we see the where we came from up by the moon? Uh, yes. The moon is it is it is as I said. The SS coffin is angled directly towards it, and there is a wave of water coming from every direction, including behind you. Oh. Felicity whips her head around, looking at the water on all sides with a panic in her eyes. Before she knows what she's doing, she's taken to the helm, her claws digging into the ship's wooden wheel. She calls out, Everyone listen! Look to the moon and hold on tight! We're getting out of here! Look to the moon! This does. So the water, the water that is rushing up from this from this horizon closing around you, like when an asteroid hits the water, there is like that much water, it's just, and you are just gunning straight forward. And if you weren't traveling on the winds of intention, if you weren't going where you're going to go, then you would just be capsized, destroyed. In fact, Felicity and Dudu both make a uh, performance check and add your proficiency because we are making a performance. That's a nat 20 plus 5. All right. Well, that'll fucking do it probably, but Dudu, what do you got? Two. Well, plus <laughs> okay. two. So four. Okay, so Dudu, you thought you were at the helm. You actually had you. You were actually uh, raising the anchor. Fortunately, uh, you did. You did such a bad job at the. Wait, helm. this isn't the helm. Oh well. Yeah, but now the anchor's raised, and that's good because Felicity, with the nat twenty, you you are just like doing everything that I, a simple DM who has never, ma- who has never steered a ship, I would have no idea how even to begin to describe it. Oh, but we can all picture it. Oh my God, ropes are flying around. You're saying the word uh, forecastle, but in the way that they want you to say it, which is foxel, which is what it's fucking boats, man. This is like, it's wild shit. Uh, but the, the, you are directing it. That enormous sail that you got from the SS coffin is filled with the winds of intention. And you are shoved directly at that ramp that the ship is forming. And the wind fills this huge sail and you are carried up and up towards... Oh, the moon is almost gone, but oh, Lunatic Lagoon is still there, it's shining, and because you are all looking at it, and because we spent like seven hours establishing that this is how this works, this is not bullshit, the (laughs) winds fill the sail, and you are raised up, and up, and up, and visk in the half second before the Necrona makes contact with the waters of Lunatic Lagoon, you spare a last look back at the Wonder Sea, and you suddenly realize something. That round sea with the white water surrounding blue water surrounding black and the pit at the center and the line of quivering spires to the north and south. Even though your own pair is a little different, even though the lids that were those horizons are almost closed, you recognize an eye when you see it. And if you had longer, maybe you could get a look at what, if anything, that eye belongs to. But it's at this instant that the Necrona lands in Lunatic Lagoon with a splash. send you all speeding down, down to the end of the adventure. Yay! Yay!